This was without a doubt one of the most intense experiences of my flying career thus far. Oh, I got it. You want? Okay, full power, full power. November 9 or 9 or 1 for traffic, descend and maintain 6,000. Out of 7,000, 6,000, 8,091. Brandon, Brooke, and I took a weekend trip to Loveland, Colorado, and we spent all Sunday flying back to San Marcos, Texas. We knew the whole day that San Marcos would most likely be IFR when we arrived, and we were okay with that since I would get to experience a real instrument approach in actual conditions for my first time, but little did we know that it was going to be right down to minimums. To our surprise, the weather got worse as the day progressed. We were carefully watching to make sure it wasn't going to fall below minimums, which is a half mile visibility and 200 foot ceilings. We had several alternate airports in mind, and I planned out our route so that we would have over an hour and a half worth of reserve fuel when we arrived at San Marcos, just in case the weather prevented us from landing and we had to divert to one of our alternates. I'm going to add a few voiceovers throughout the video here and there to help explain the complicated procedures that go into shooting this approach, and also to help explain some little things along the way. This video will be a bit longer than normal due to the amount of content that was captured on this flight, and I definitely don't want to leave anything untouched. Every little thing about this approach helped me learn something about IFR, and I definitely hope it helps you learn something by watching this video. Yeah. Uh, still sucks? It's three quarter mile over yeah. cast 300. Yeah. That's... Oof. I don't want your... Okay. Huh. I'm just... Man, your first one, to minimum, that's gonna be fun. That'll be a story to tell. For sure. Yeah, they must be closing remarks. Last. Leaving 1-1000 for a clinger. Leaving 1-1000 for a clinger. What that means? Last, like this is the last report where the tower closes. Oh. Uh, and Austin, uh, Cessna 991 request. Cessna 991, go ahead. Yes, ma'am, just because uh, the tower is closing very shortly and we'll be arriving shortly thereafter, can you call over there and ask them, if you have a chance, can you call and ask them to leave the runway 1-3 uh, threshold uh, approach lights on high intensity? Roger. Hey, Roger. Just one less thing for us to worry about. Okay, roger that, man. All the runway lights will be on high. We appreciate it. Uh, say again, what is out of service, ma'am? 991? 991, the power control lighting is out of service. That's why they're leaving everything on high. Okay, we appreciate that. Roger that. Thank you, 991. Uh, if we would have given it seven clicks, it wouldn't have done anything anyways. It would have already been on. would have shut it off. No. Three, three dims of it. Okay, roger that, man. We'll probably have to cancel on the ground with you at 991. I want to go over real quick exactly what was just said over the radio. Right now it's about 645 and the tower at San Marcos closes at 7 o'clock. Brandon wanted to call approach to make sure that the rails or the runway alignment indicator lights were going to be on full intensity so we could see the runway as soon as possible. The approach controller then told us that the pilot controlled lighting system was out of service at San Marcos. This is a system that I use a lot when the tower is closed. It allows the pilots to use their radios to activate the runway lights and either raise or lower the intensity of them. Given that the pilot controlled lighting system is out of service, the controller at Austin informed us that the tower controllers at San Marcos were going to leave all lights on full intensity. As we were looking for the runway, however, we found the information we got from air traffic control to be false. The approach lights were in fact not on. This made the last few seconds leading up to the landing a bit more intense for us, since we were expecting to see the approach lights before anything else and ended up seeing the edge of the runway first. She said, join the localizer runway 13. Does that mean we turn it into the runway? Yeah, when when we get the localizer, yeah. And I, if we don't get it this far out, which I, I mean, we may not, 
then uh, then we'll just use the GPS to it's follow picking it. up. It it's, it's pegged all the way yeah, over. it is. No flag. Make sure you turn, you turn more than 10, so... Serious brand until the ground down. You know. Yeah. San Marcos Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation. Zero 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 one. Zulu weather. Wind zero niner zero at four. Visibility one and one half. Sky condition ceiling three hundred overcast. Temperature one one Celsius. Two point one zero Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero seven. Remarks. San Marcus Tower, hours of operation of 0700 local time to 1900 local time. Frequency for automated weather is 120.825. Flat delta services are terminated. Under traffic advisory frequency, highway control lighting frequency 126.8. Okay, we're good on that, right? Yeah. And approach A0991 has the weather at San Marcus. 0991, thank you. Out of 6,000, 3,000, That all goes out? No, it goes out way more. You want it all the way out? Yeah, why not? Okay. Go ahead and get, get set up. Just hold your localizer. I'll plug your apparatus. Oh, yeah. Production's good, oil pressure's good. So ignore the glide slope for now, we're just ascending to 3000 and maintain your heading. That's all you gotta do. If you need help with anything, I'll... 1188, flying heading to 130 vectors for the final first course. Descend to maintain 5000. Heading 130 down I won't do anything without telling you. Okay. So 9901 uh, tops are at about 5,500, uh, 5,300 5, here. And the call approach was at Southwest 257. Okay. Negative, man. 9901 tops are at 5,400 here. Roger, thank you, sir. At any time it doesn't feel right or you get disoriented or something, let me know, okay? Okie dokie. Speak up. I pull a little bit more power out. About 100, 200 RPM. Help get our descent rate. American 1188, contact approach 125.32. 2532, American 1188, full. Cessna 991, 15 miles from Gary's, maintain 3000 until established on the final approach. Course cleared on runway 13, approach at the San Marcus Airport. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we're from Gary's and uh, cleared, Ar uh, you said cleared RNAV or ILS, ma'am? Sorry, it's just 991, Clint Islas, runway 13 approach. Okay, Clint Islas, 13 approach, San Marcos will maintain 3000 until Gary's, A09901. Yeah, she said RNAV, and I was like, nah, nah. Okay. <laughs> I want you to focus on that localizer, you're doing a great job. At this point, we are now established on the localizer for runway 13, and we're cleared to descend down to 3000 feet. However, we cannot go any lower than 3000 feet until we are at Gary's, which is the final approach fix for this portion of the ILS. By the controller telling us that we are cleared for the approach, she's saying we're now allowed to fly the approach per the instructions on the published approach plate. However, we must stay at 3,000 feet until we are established on the localizer, and then once we're at Gary's, which is the final approach fix, we can then intercept the glide slope and follow it down to the runway, which is our next step. There we go. Great job. Evening departure, American 1600 out of 2000 for 4000. American 1600, Austin, departure radar contact, turn right heading 300, climb maintain 12000. Right heading 300, climb to 12000, American 1600. Okay. 
Four thousand. Okay, got a thousand feet to go. Now we got time. Curious. Okay, good. Good job. Great job. Add a little bit of power now if you want. There we go. Follow that descent right, Good job. 555 11 7, uh, descend via the lakes with uh, Mike. Okay, good. Southwest 555 Austin, approach, plan runway 17 right. Southwest 155, runway 17 right, RVR, more than 6,000. Beautiful. Those big boys. It's going to be hard to believe what the uh, quarter mile is, though. Yeah, it's uh, a little discrepancy there, but uh, we like your numbers better. Mile and a half is here, we're good. We're well above. Mile and a half now? Mile and a half, okay. That's the last report of San Marcos about 10 minutes ago. It goes up and down, so. Yeah. That's a lot, that's all we got to go on. Our, I'll start setting it up at Gary's. Okay, yeah. 1500 quid with LOL. So, you're to the left, so let's get back to the right because. Yeah. As we get closer, it gets more, yeah, yeah. more sensitive there. Well, and, and if you start drifting more than 10 degrees off, then you have to do some magic to get it back. Yeah. You know, as long as you stay within 10 degrees, 5 degrees, it's not a big deal to, yeah. to adjust. Good, I was wondering about to ask that. Okay, we're set up to land other than the flaps, but we make mixture slowly bring it in rich too. And I'll help you there. Seven miles from Gary's, we're going to maintain 3,000. Suction's good. Yeah, oil pressure's good, is good, okay. Southside 55, depart boys, heading 090 vectors for sequencing, and a mid-altitude maintain 6,000. 090 out of boys, 6,000. I'm put your tower frequency in right here, okay? Okay. I'm not trying to sound patronizing, I realize I am. But okay. No, not that. <laughs> Add a little power so you know this ends. Okay, you came to the right a little bit. Bring it back left about five degrees. And I will adjust your heading indicator for you in just a second, okay? Okay, I can get it. Got it. It's about a five degree right away. Houston Center, 134.2. Good day. 34.2, so about long. Five back. degrees right. There we go. Fix that was a lot. Good job. There. Yeah, no, you're doing a good job, dude. Alright, 0991, radar service Sherman, change your vice frequency approved. You can uh, cancel in the air with me or on the ground via clearance of your frequency of 121.35. Okay, so we'll have to cancel on the ground with you and uh, change it to advisory, we're keeping the code 991. I'll get this. There you go. Yeah. This is San Marcos traffic, uh, Cessna A0991 is about uh, 6 miles to the northwest. Inbound ILS runway 13 San Marcos. About five degrees back to the right. Uh, try and get that centered up. Yeah. Well, I, see, I want you to anticipate though, right? Okay. Yeah. Because it will, it will catch you. Although five degrees, I'm, I'm hammering you about little stuff, but it's just getting more sensitive as we approach. Right. That's all. We're cruising now at 3,000 feet and waiting to intersect Gary's, which is where we'll intercept the glide slope and follow it all the way down to the runway. The initial approach fix is where I'd like to start getting the airplane ready for landing, so I'll begin to slow down and start extending the flaps at that time. Real minor. Good job. Five degrees is all you need, just one, and then give it time to react, right? Right. And remember what we briefed back there, pitches airspeed powers altitude like usual, so adjust, find a set power setting, you know, 1900, 1800, 1700, whatever it is, it'll give you that three degree descent rate. Okay. Okay. Start pulling a little power out, so I'm gonna keep that nose up, get yep. some speed back. That's right. Giving you a little more mixture, richer, um, uh, here. Mile and a half to go. Yeah, San Marcos traffic. Cessna 991 is crossing over Gary's inbound ILS runway 13, full stop, San Marcos. About five degrees of right. Oh, you're doing okay. Excellent. Dude, that's too fast. Alright. Now you can pull that power within half a mile. You're gonna. 1 1000. 2 1000. 3 1000. Okay. Can change your configuration, but that'll help you descend, of course. Get that power back. Get descending. Hi. Use those flaps if you want to throw full flaps in. Get down. 500 feet a minute, man. No pansy descents here. <laughs> okay? Okay. Watch that localizer too. That glide slope's getting way beneath you. Full power. Full power. Add flaps if you want. 
That laps help you descend. 1,000. 1,000. Yeah, you catch it early, you have plenty of time to recover it, right? Right, right. This is not a, this is not a go miss situation. Keep, keep that the same rate going. 500 feet per minute's good. That was, that was bringing the lights up. And I'll, if I will tell you if I see ground, you focus on the instruments until I say no, otherwise. I'm not looking. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we got it. Good, good, good. Just bring that localizer in a little bit. A couple degrees left. There we go. San Marcos traffic, uh, Cessna 991 three mile final, 13 ILS, uh, San Marcos. Don't let it get behind you because you'll fall behind it. We'll start pulling power now. Point the nose over. Pull more power, point the nose over. Point that nose over. You're both good. Uh, pull, let's go more power up. Yeah, I've got ground contact. I got keep, it. Keep, keep, on the, keep on the instruments for a little bit longer. So we get that runway, we can't. We don't see it here in a second, we're gonna have to go miss. Oh, I got it. That was just as good as I could have done. Marcus traffic, Skyhawk 8091, clear runway 13, San Marcus. Alright, I'm your mixture for you. Alright. Wow. Wow. The last few seconds of that approach would have been made a lot easier if the approach lights would have been on like we were told. But the important thing is, it was a successful landing. According to Brandon, that was also his lowest IFR approach he's ever done in his career as well. Of course, for the bigger commercial jets, this may seem like nothing, but for us small general aviation pilots, we don't deal with these kind of conditions all too often, so it's quite an experience when we do. You'll never improve yourself and you'll never learn anything if you don't test your limits and explore new challenges, but you must do so responsibly. I had an experienced instructor sitting by my side talking me through the approach, and my hand was ready on the throttle to execute the missed approach at any second, but I saw the runway just as we hit minimums. I was proud I was able to fly the entire approach on my own without any assistance except for some verbal coaching. After flying several hundred hours of nothing but VFR, this was a huge accomplishment for me, especially for it being my very first instrument approach, period. As a student pilot, or in my case, an instrument student pilot, you can't be afraid to screw up and make mistakes. Experience is our greatest teacher, but it's up to you to allow it to teach you a lesson every now and then. Admitting to your own mistakes is the best thing you can do to make yourself a better pilot in the cockpit, and a better person out of the cockpit. If you like these videos, you can click subscribe to be notified whenever a new video is released every Monday. I'm also hosting a Patreon campaign, which is a great help when it comes to funding the costs of processing and editing all of this footage that I capture. So if you like the videos and you'd like to help out and support them, you can click on the Patreon logo or on the Patreon link in the description, and even donating one or two dollars per video makes a big difference. I appreciate you tuning in to watch this tense instrument approach. Until next time, I wish you weather above minimums and big bright approach lights. Thank you for watching.